Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and just a couple of announcements. First of all, um, I'll remind everybody about this uh, two-class trial I'm going to offer starting August 2nd. And what I mean by this is that many people have indi indicated an interest in the Nutrition Educator Program. This is our alternative to dietetics, and it's an excellent one. However, it involves 900 hours of instruction and a lot of homework and paper writing and presentations and that sort of thing, which is good. It's, it's a rigorous program, which turns you into a good little scientist, but the other side of it is it can be a little off-putting in terms of commitment. So what I'm doing is if you are considering, this is not open to everybody because I don't wanna cast a thousands in this particular course, but if you're actually considering the Nutrition Educator Program, uh, we're going to offer, I'm going to teach two classes, the Research and Writing Overview, which is part of that program, and uh, Nutrition and Health, um, which is another overview type of course. And so this is a 15 week total, 15 classes. And at the end, we'll finish around Thanksgiving time, then people can say, okay, um, I can see myself doing this for an extended period of time, or great, I learned a lot, but I just don't want to go forward uh, with this anymore. And either way, there are other ways to learn from us, by the way, if you don't want to do the formal instruction with homework and reading assignments and things of that nature every week. Um, we don't need to uh, we don't need to stick to only that program as an option for learning. So if you're interested in that and you have been one of those people considering nutrition educator, but you're just a little gun shy, haven't been in school for a long time and all that sort of thing, send me an email. And also, if you're interested in professional development programs from Wellness Forum and the Wellness Forum Institute, also let me know. We have we offer thousands of hours of programming here and um, we can teach you how to do the kind of work that we do and that sort of thing. So my email address is pampopper at msn.com. All right, so what I wanna talk about today is um, diet and the risk of COVID-19 in young adults. People today remain concerned about the risk of getting COVID and what to do to prevent it and what do you do to mitigate the severity if you do get it and that sort of thing. Well, there's no such thing as reducing the risk to zero, but there are strategies proven to reduce the risk as much as possible. And you won't be shocked to hear that I'm referring to diet and lifestyle habits. Now, there are a lot of good studies showing that diet and lifestyle habits influence health status and outcomes. But having said that, the medical journals are filled with bad studies brought with methodological errors. Now, a common error is the use of self-reported data on diet and exercise and other things, which has been shown to be wildly inaccurate. For example, the NHANES data, uh, which is collected by the USDA uh, periodically, at one time showed that most people in the United States don't eat enough calories to support their weight. Now, that's impossible, right, to have happen. So, um, obviously, there's a lot of misreporting going on when people report to a third party what they're eating or how much they're exercising. So I was really excited to find a well-designed study concerning the relationship between diet and COVID-19. So let's start with some basics. A well-functioning immune system is an important strategy for reducing the risk of all diseases, not just COVID. It's well established that diet has a profound effect on the immune system and that a poor diet weakens immune response. And I just taught a course on that. So many of you took that and know a lot about this issue. Other lifestyle factors impacting immune function include things like physical activity and rest and whether or not you smoke. Another important consideration for reducing the risk of COVID or severe COVID is the condition of your gut microbiome. And we talked about that in the nutrition and immune function class. There is a direct relationship between the bacterial makeup and health of the microbiome and the risk and severity of respiratory disease. And by the way, your diet affects that microbiome. So everything is connected in the world we live in in terms of how we look at health. So let's talk about the study design. This was the thing that made me excited about this particular study, not just that it proves something I talk about all the time, but the way in which they arrived at the conclusion. Um, it was conducted in two segments, one for men, one for women. The first was uh, involved both vegetarian and non-vegetarian men who were observed for a week. The researchers made sure that the observational week was typical with similar diet and physical activity levels as they normally engaged in, 
If some kind of special event was scheduled for the week, then the observation was moved to the following week. So that's very, very good design. The subjects were given a um, polar watch to measure physical activity. And the way that the diet information was um, obtained was for the subjects to write down what they ate every day. And this is called contemporaneous recording. We use it in our office when people are reporting to our dietitians what they eat so that they can help them change their diet and develop shopping lists and all that kind of stuff. And we found that it's pretty accurate. People are remarkably honest in writing down what they're doing as they do it. It's the recall, like how many servings of this or that do you eat per week that tends to end up in wildly inaccurate data. So um, we, we have some accurate data on diet to look at. The selection criteria were also quite clear. Young men age 25 to 45, no chronic diseases, normal or slightly over normal BMI, dietary pattern maintained for at least a year and no antibiotic or probiotic therapy for at least three months before evaluation. They did the same thing with the women. So the two arms were identical in study design, just one for men and one for women. The combined results, will not shock you. People who consume more plants, fruits, vegetables, nuts, legumes had an 86% lower risk of COVID-19. Higher carbohydrate, water, and fiber intake was associated with lower risk. Not surprisingly, the diet, including more plants, had a lower dietary inflammatory index, which was also associated with lower risk. Remember one thing, inflammation increases the risk of all diseases. There were also significant differences in the consumption of minerals and vitamins between the groups. People with a history of COVID-19 had a lower dietary intake of nutrients like potassium, magnesium, iron, zinc, copper, manganese, vitamin E, thiamine, vitamin B6, and folate than those without a history of the disease. And those are nutrients, even including iron, that are abundantly available in plant food. Now, people think of meat, for example, as having a higher iron uh, content, it does, but the body absorbs non-heme iron on a much more selective basis, which keeps the body from accumulating too much iron most of the time, that's important. In the discussion, the authors note that there aren't any single nutrients that are effective for preventing COVID-19, but emphasize the role of good nutrition in general for optimizing immune function. At the end, the researchers conclude, I'm gonna give you their direct quote from their conclusions, we can hypothesize that if the above results translated to the entire population of young people without comorbidities, it could be expected that the number of people contracting COVID-19 would decrease significantly, which would provide health, economic, social, and psychological benefits. Importantly, our results may have a wider application than the SARS-CoV-2 setting, as the immune system is constantly exposed to various other types of pathogens. Moreover, other viruses may cause new epidemic outbreaks in the future. Therefore, it is important to emphasize the role of proper nutrition for optimal immune function. Physical activity and a proper diet ensuring the supply of all necessary nutrients should form the basis of health nutrients. Um, so, all in all, an excellent, um, well done study. Uh, some other findings from that study included that the higher fiber intake nurtured the gut microbiome and these people had uh, higher counts of beneficial bacteria, um, which are uh, very closely tied to immune function as well. Now, the good news about adopting such a diet, and we've never promoted dietary perfection here. I'm kind of a lunatic about the way I take care of myself, particularly now because I'm working so hard, but um, we've never stressed dietary perfection as much just as adopting a protective health promoting diet. Do the, the max needed for health promotion. If you want to take it further, you can. Now, everybody's concerned right now about COVID-19, but we still have major issues in this country and all westernized countries, high incidence of cardiovascular disease and death from it, still the leading killer. Cancer is catching up, second leading killer, but it's catching up to heart disease. Well, if you wanna reduce your risk of those diseases, diet and exercise and a healthy gut microbiome play a major role in reducing the risk of those diseases as well. There's even a considerable amount of evidence that they can be effective as an adjuvant and helping to reverse those uh, diseases as well. So um, for 27 years, I've dedicated my professional career to teaching people how to take care of themselves. I mean. 
you know, it's, it's best to do, to maintain your body at just the way you maintain your cars and houses. I mean, I don't know anybody who waits until the house is falling down to maintain things. Most of us call the plumber at the first sign of a leak at the sink, and we're quick to replace the roof before it starts raining inside. Most of us take our cars in for scheduled maintenance. Well, take your body to the grocery store. That's scheduled maintenance and hang out in the produce section. That's the best scheduled maintenance that you can engage in to keep yourself healthy. All right, that's all for today. As usual, I'll pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. And I will be back to you tomorrow with more news.